You know, purpose is what the Christian life is all about. No one was more on purpose than Jesus. Jesus said, the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. He knew why he was here. He wasn't confused about why he was here. To the church today, sometimes seems like she doesn't know why she's here. And I've often said that she doesn't know why she's here because she forgot why Jesus came. They came to Jesus one time and said, Jesus, you preached really good over there the other night. Come back and preach for us again in the book of Luke. And he said, no, I must go to the next towns also, for thereunto am I sent. He wasn't willing, Paul wasn't willing, to saturate the one area with the gospel over and over and over and over. He knew he had to go to many cities, many cities, many nations. He knew that he was a soldier under command. He had a job to do, and we have a job to do. Our purpose is to get the gospel to the world. We're not here just marking time. We're not here just to sit in the church pew and do nothing. We're here to be about the master's business and fulfill the Great Commission. Remember, you are more than conquerors. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello, everybody. God bless you. Welcome today to More Than Conquerors program. We are just delighted that you have joined us today, and we're going to talk about some really, really good stuff. You have to raise your standard. You have to look higher. You have to keep yourself alert and ready to go. Isn't that what Paul said? Always be aglow and burning with the Spirit. Yeah, and aiming toward the mark. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You cannot take your foot off the gas pedal, folks. No, that's true, and we're excited about what God's doing. You know, these last two or three weeks of broadcast, we've really been on a roll talking about faith. Yes, and, thank you know, God. And, faith you know, faith just always stirs us that's up right. and gets us excited because we live by faith. Everything that's we right. do is by faith. You can't please God without faith. And uh, faith is just the thing that, you, you know, as the old saying is, you dance with those that brung you. And faith is, faith, <laughs> as, right. as the old, old song that's says, right. we've come this far by faith. Faith has brought us this oh, far. My, yes. And faith is going to keep taking us. You know, when you talk about faith, too, Terry, I mean, um, you've brought this up so many times, but and we know this from from being raised in church that the just shall live by faith is in the Bible. How many times? Four times. Four times. And uh, if the Bible says and repeats itself at least <laughs> twice or two or three times, but Old when, Testament and New. Old Testament and New. It says that you've got to live by faith. Heaven is waiting on you to live by faith. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's such a misunderstood sub. It's probably the most misunderstood word, right, in the English language, because everybody says, "Well, I got faith. I got faith. I got faith." <laughs> well, you know, the Bible says even the devil has faith that God is. He right. really believes that God's alive. He uh, believes. Yeah. But uh, uh, faith is the is the is the currency of heaven. It is faith. Faith is what you spend, and uh, we're we're excited about it. And yeah. uh, we we we've lived by it for a long time. We're not going to stop now. No. And uh, faith is the thing that's going to put you over. And uh, Jesus said, "When I come back." Will I find faith on wow. the earth? He was concerned. Luke chapter 18, he was concerned. He didn't say, will I find love on the earth? Will I find grace on the earth? Will I find peace on the earth? He's going to be looking for one thing. He's going to be looking for faith. And I've always told him, yes, sir, If you when you come back, I don't know where I'll be, India, Africa, wherever I'm preaching somewhere, you, you find me and you'll find faith because we're going to stick with it. Yes, we are. We're going to stick with it, and, and we're, uh, we're excited about it. We're doing everything we can to grow in faith ourselves. Of course. And then help other people grow, help other people learn about faith, help other people realize they have the ability, the faith of God down on the inside Absolutely. of them. Absolutely. You know, when you and Dean got married, you were you were Christians. 
Right. You were spirit-filled Christians. Yes. You were tongue-talking Christians. That's you were right. Bible-believing Christians. Yes, Hands clapping, yes, yes. foot stomping, glory shouting. Right. And so was I, and so was Jackie when right. we got married. But the faith message right. was the cherry, the whipped cream and cherry on top. The faith message made it all work. That's right. Now, you can still love God. You can serve God any way you want to. You can serve God and not even go to church, not even read your Bible. You can still love God. But the more the more you apply faith to it, the better it gets. It and again, does. it's not a reward. It, it's an absolute purchase That's right. that Jesus made with his it own blood. It becomes a daily lifestyle. That we can take his name, his word, his blood, his covenant, the Holy Ghost, and go up. But we, it's a covenant of blood and the blood of the covenant that puts us over. And so we like to talk about faith. Boy, that's the truth. You know, everything in life has to do with what you're going to say, what you're going to believe. Absolutely. And it, people live or die yeah. by what they say out of their mouth or what they believe in their heart. And we even prove that Old Testament and New. Yeah, you know, and it doesn't matter if you're a two-year-old child or if you're a 102-year-old saint, you know, down here living on earth, or you're you're even ignorant of some of these things. You were saying a minute ago, Terry, that, that um, you know, pe people can uh, trust in the Lord. They can be a faithful church member and still not know how to believe God, still be sick and poor, of course. still be discouraged, depressed. Doesn't mean you depressed. don't love God. Doesn't mean God doesn't love you. It just means right. you're, you're living beneath your privileges right. when you don't know well, when you don't know. I had a radio program for about... Ignorance is not bliss. Yeah, no. <laughs> Ignorance is not bliss, and what you don't know can kill you. I had a radio program uh, when all those years Dean and I were pastoring, and then later on TV, and it was called Raising the Standard. And everything in the Word of God has to do with God taking you from higher faith, from glory to glory, Absolutely. faith to faith. Absolutely. And it's a, it's a very progressive, forward-moving, uh, very, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're out there on the front lines of battle every single day. And if you don't learn how to withstand the attack of the enemy and you don't know what your objective is and you're just living case of raw, raw, whatever will be, will be, uh, you're going to end up with your nose bloodied laying over in a ditch somewhere and you won't know how to get out. No, and you won't know if God did it, the devil did it, or who did it. Isn't that the truth? Thank you for watching today. Renee and I always enjoy ministering to you. And one thing about the word, it works. I've always said about the, our books and tapes and products that there's no theory back there. It's 54 years of third world missionary evangelism that I know for a fact works. You know, the COVID thing is about wrapped up, thank God. And uh, different restrictions are lifting around the world. And so uh, we're beginning to move out around the world again, which is what we've done for 54 years. And so uh, we want to invite you to partner with us, to hook up with us, to go around the world with us. You know, in our as far as teaching and training, we train missionaries, uh, we train pastors. Uh, I've had pastors' conferences in country after country after country, which is something God spoke to me to do when I was just a teenager, to train ministers. And so we've done that. But we also have open-air crusades and different kind of crusades in different nations uh, with healings and miracles and salvations. So we want to invite you to be partners with us as we have partnered with other ministries all, really all of our lives. And we pray for our partners daily. We'll pray for you daily. So make it a consideration. Make it a prayer. See what the Holy Ghost says to you. And uh, we'd be glad to have you partner with us and go around the world with us. God bless you. We're, I'm really excited. I know you are, but I'm really excited that you've just redone uh, your <laughs> your first book, yes, High Class yes. Christianity. Right. And uh, you, you, you actually wrote it years ago uh, as a pastor's wife right. in South Texas, surrounded by Catholics, and you wrote it to help Catholics, right? Uh, and and then you since then you've redone it, yes, uh, and added to it, right? Because everybody needs to hear it. No, so that's so talk right. to us a little bit about that. What what got you into it in the first place? I mean, I know why, but tell the tell the folks why you wrote a book called High Class Christianity. Sometimes I think the title's misleading, yeah, because sometimes somewhat, sometimes people look at it and say High Class Christianity. Oh, she must want me to drive a Mercedes or a, or, or a fly a jet. No, and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. It's just that's not what she's talking about. Well, and the subtitle on that book cover mm -hmm. says, Higher Thoughts for Higher Living. Mm -hmm. 
That's what we're talking about is high-class thinking, high-class living, high-class and that you're in the sense of where you're thinking the thoughts of God, you're saying the words of God. In other words, you're not just mere men. No, we are, we're not just living by what we see on the lateral a view of life, mm-hmm. but we want to be able to take you up higher from the Word of God so that you think higher, you talk higher, you expect more. You live higher. Yeah, you, you, you don't see yourself as a victim. Right. You see yourself as a warrior. <laughs> you're taking higher ground. You're, you're out there. You're the aggressor. You're taking uh, advantage of every promise from the, on the pages of this book, and you are literally, confidently going into the battle of daily life knowing that God has a plan for victory for you. Absolutely. You know? yeah. But I, I was teaching. I had What had happened, Terry, is um, a, a wonderful friend of mine who uh, was Catholic mm-hmm. and her husband was a, a deacon in the Catholic Church. They were very uh, uh, closely tied to the leadership of the one of the probably about the largest if not the largest Catholic Church in the South Texas area. And um, she had a, a very wealthy attorney friend who had had a tremendous miracle of um, his son uh, having a ski accident, had gotten injured. They didn't give him any hope in his life. And the man had, the attorney had, had literally turned his life around, told God if he'd heal his son, he'd give the Catholic Church $2 million. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he kept his word, and God did too. And I'm telling you, people started coming to him, and he owned a very large um, venue there in Corpus Christi where even very famous rock groups came out and uh, did concerts and everything there. People flocked out there by the thousands and he turned his life around and said, I'm going to serve God. I'm not going to serve myself and live the life I've lived before. I'm going to serve God. And um, he had people coming to him for miracles and this this wonderful attorney was having miracles um, you know, just by him praying for people. Sure. And uh, and he didn't know anything about the Bible, and he went to my friend, and he said, do you know anybody that can come out here and teach the Bible? He said, people want to know about the Bible, what the Bible says about miracles. And he says, I don't know anything about the Bible. And so my friend came to me. He was just me. praying for people and having miracles. He was just praying for people <laughs> <laughs> and having miracles. And and uh, he was very well known in the South Texas area, had, had law office is all over in Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, Corpus Christi, and the Valley. And um, he um, he invited, through my friend, for me to come out and start teaching on Monday nights. So I went out there and met the man, uh, started teaching on Monday nights and to a group of about 300 or more Catholics every Monday night for about a year and a half. And people would come out there, rain or shine, every Monday night. Even like you were saying in the last couple of uh, times, Terry, um, Catholic priests came out there. Sure. I began to have favor with the Monsignor. Sure. I began to have favor with these Catholic priests and got invited to three different Catholic churches to come and speak because of just the simple uh, way of teaching the Word of God. Yes. That we had to teach faith. Yes. You know, yes. that it, they didn't have to beg God anymore, that they could believe God. Absolutely. You know, for the promises of God in healing. And, it, and different in, in one sense from you going into uh, the most remote third world countries of the world, uh, this was uh, church people, but didn't know anything about faith. Mm-hmm. Right, sure. I mean, they didn't. A lot of that going. Yeah, (laughs) they didn't know anything at all about faith, and um, I actually took Brother Hagen's little mini book out there, bought it, went to the Bible uh, dollar store, and bought sacks and sacks of dollar Bibles, and took them out there. And I took little Brother Hagen's little mini book on in him, and uh, they weren't used to teaching of the Bible, right. so I could only teach two or three pages off that little book of in him. And then at the end, the attorney friend and I would stand up, and he would he would have uh, a healing line. 
out there Mm -hmm. and it was just absolutely stunning he'd invite people up to be prayed for and they bring their little rosaries in a box or they bring them up in their hands and i'd lay hands on those rosaries and we'd lay hands on the box of rosaries and sometimes there'd be uh well behind us always there were these big statues of jesus joseph and mary looking over your shoulder looking over my shoulder every time i ministered and then sometimes there'd be a catholic priest or two that would come and they'd sprinkle holy water on us while we were praying for people and laying hands on them. And I had people come and ask me over and over the first few weeks and months there said, why do we need to learn the Bible? We've never been taught the Bible. We've been taught to go to church and we've been taught to come to confession and we've been taught to come and, and give our money and, and be a, support the church, but we've never been taught that we should uh, study the Bible. And why do we need to learn the Bible, Terry. Yes. And I mean, don't you want amazing? don't you want people to come and ask yes. you this? <laughs> oh, and I have overseas. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you know what? A, what a dream gig that is to go in to people that want to know why do we need to learn the Bible? And I and I sought the Lord on it, and I asked the Lord, what do I need to do here to make this clear? So I started over in Isaiah fifty five. Um, you know, there where the Lord is talking to the people of His people. And he says here, let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return. That means you're already a Christian. You're already probably going to church or you've already had some sort of relationship with the Lord and let him return again to the Lord and he will have love and pity and mercy on him and he will multiply to him his abundant part. It's already abundant pardon but the amplified says he will multiply his abundant pardon Amen. to him Amen. and then the next verse is is where i began to teach them on for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are my ways your ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts so that's where i begin to teach and that's where i begin to talk to them about it that god just thinks higher thoughts than we do and lo and behold the bible is where he wrote those things down Mm -hmm. and if you can get a bible and begin to read the bible you'll begin to be acquainted with the thoughts of god and you can begin to think like god thinks and i told him to start in the psalms and start over in the gospels and learn about jesus and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Terry, you know how you've you've heard Brother Osteen say uh, for years and years where he would say, now when when you're first learning the Bible, he said, you go over and you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, and you walk those dusty roads with Jesus, and you walk the length of Israel, and you walk into Bethlehem, and you walk into Capernaum with Jesus, and you walk into the temple with Jesus, and see his sandals filled with dust, and the people behind Behind him clambering and, and he would just you know break it down right. you know and and make it real to you and he said take time to read it slowly and read it out loud so that you can understand it's for you well i talked to those folks just like that and i began to to t- teach them about thinking the thoughts of god that we can't think low class we have to think high class we can't think low and worried and f- and i talked about how uh, low class is worried and fear, anxiety, unbelief. Um, You and I have talked so much about uh, Hebrews 3 and 4, you know, how the Israelites got into so much trouble over there, you know, and it says over there that their unbelief shut them out. Yes, it did. You know, when someone's walking in unbelief and... It's such an enemy of faith. It is an enemy of faith. It's and. It gets them over into fear. It eventually will lead them into fear. And they can just, and and it says that they couldn't even believe God. There was nothing there for them to believe God, no matter what God said. And then I think it's so amazing where it says there that, that God is talking through Moses to them. He said, you know, it was bad enough that you couldn't believe me whom you couldn't see, but you wouldn't even believe Moses whom you could see. And I think that's one of the most... 
heartbreaking indictments against sure. anyone personally, sure. and then certainly to a group of people or to a church, like the Catholic Church or the Methodist Church or the Pentecostal Church or the Baptist Church, that we no longer are believing the thoughts of God. And that's what God wants us to do is learn how to think high like he does. And it's just like the, I, I don't know where the reference is to that, Terry, um, where the prophet of God told uh, the king, he said, if you'll take these arrows and strike them on the ground, that's mm-hmm. how many victories I'll give you. You know, right. he said, strike the ground with the arrows. And he only struck the ground, th- what, three times? Yeah. And he said, why didn't you strike more? Why didn't you, why didn't you, why didn't you act like there, I could do it more than three times? You know, he said, <laughs> God, God is upset with people that, that won't expect they don't think high enough. They don't think high enough. They won't expect more. They don't believe more. They don't have their eyes on a God that says he'll do exceedingly abundantly. I think you quoted that in one of the other uh, sure. you know, sure. times when we were on the air. But I just want to encourage you with that. When you look at these scriptures here, for he's, he says here, for my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways. And that's why I wrote that book, High Class Christianity, Higher Thoughts, for higher living, and we just take this apart. We just begin to look at that from from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. We begin to talk about in the book how you need to think higher thoughts. And and unbelief and low-class thinking just kind of will try to seep in there. It's very subtle. (laughs) It's very incremental. Unbelief will try to get in there, and 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 you'll get discouraged by what you see. Um, during that time, Terry, I, uh, the Lord just began to talk to me about so many things about how looking at the clock, always wondering when, when is this going to happen, and that does with uh, goes along with what it says in Deuteronomy twenty eight that people will start languishing. One of the curses is languishing. Yes, yes. You know, you're getting discouraged by looking at the clock or the calendar. When are you going to do this, Lord? When are we going to be delivered? When are we going to be? You know, like they said there, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him in Acts chapter one, and they said, you know, Jesus, when are you going to set up your kingdom? Right, right. And Jesus answered them, was it's not for you to know the seasons or the times. He said, your job is to go to Jerusalem, get full of the Holy Ghost. In other words, in other words, if you'll be full of the Holy Ghost, those questions won't torment you any further. And so during when I was teaching all this, it just opened up to me. Don't let a clock or a calendar or, or what's on either side of the decimal point torment you. You can't let those things torment you because that'll turn into dread and fear and worry sure. and unbelief will then set in and you won't be able to receive anything from the Lord. So mm-hmm. you've got to stick with these high class thoughts in here that whatsoever things you desire when you pray like Brother Hagen hammered into us, you know, you just take it from there and talk about Mark eleven twenty three because that's some high class thinking. Well, it really is. I mean, Mark eleven that, twenty three. That, that scripture reference you were looking for is Second Kings chapter thirteen. Second Kings chapter thirteen. Go mm-hmm. read that. Yeah. Do you good? And uh, if it was me, I'd just keep on hitting the ground with those arrows <laughs> till the arrows broke, and then I'd pick up the pieces and keep scratching the ground with it. Because I tell you what, losing is no fun, and it's not in the plan of God. And God never lost as far as His attitude was. He He just gets so frustrated with the people of God like he did with the children of Israel, Terry. He was so angry with them because they would not believe him and trust him when he said, I'll bring you out, I'll cause you to prosper, I'll cause you to be uh, victorious over your enemies, you won't lack for anything. And they just kept saying stupid stuff like, God brought us out here to die. Yep. I mean, that's just, that's unthinkable. You know, one of my grandchildren were, was re- really little, just a toddler, just learning English. And uh, somebody let him play on their their cell phone, their iPhone. Right, right. And they found this dumb little song. <laughs> wow. And he just played it over and over. He just hit the same button, you know, over right, and over right. and over. And, and it'd get in your head and just stay with you. And it, it was called... 50 Dumb Ways to Die. Oh, my goodness. You know, and it was a children's song. Right. And you talk about, you know, if you stick a fork in the toaster, that's a really dumb way to die. And you do, 
this. And that's a really dumb way to die. And that's what I thought of when you said that. People people can think of some really dumb. They can say some dumb things really, to God. Really, really. And you think, well, what a dumb way to die. That's and not, be the people of God. That's not that's yeah. not a smart thing to do. No. Well, you know, faith, Renee. That book you you wrote has helped so many people. It brought so many of those Catholic people uh, up it into really the knowledge did. of the Word. It really uh, did. When I was a young man, and God had called me to the mission fields, you know, at age 13, because I lived in Texas, West Texas, Midland, Texas, and Mexico is just 289 right. miles away, right. I just thought, Mexico, God doesn't need to be a missionary. It must be Mexico. Sure. So I started uh, studying Spanish. And uh, uh, I realized that, um, that Mexico is mostly Catholic. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. so I would pray about that a lot. And I'd say, well, Lord, I'm a Pentecostal boy. I don't know anything about Catholics. And right. How am I going to minister to Catholics? And the Lord said, well, Catholics believe in God. Yes, they, they believe do. in Jesus. They believe in the Holy Ghost. Right. They believe in church. They believe in miracles. Right. And he said, just go preach the Bible to them. And uh, I went down to Mexico, and I had such success. Yes. You know, a lot of missionaries have these these testimonies and stories about how they were in a country for years and years and years before they ever won a soul. I mean, that's very common. No, right. Because they have to get there and learn the language, that's learn true. the customs, learn this, Shopping, learn that. Yeah. And it's just opposition, opposition, opposition. And I didn't have that. Man, I walked right into Mexico and started preaching the Bible and having miracles. Right. I mean, blind eyes open, deaf ears unstopped. I mean, pow. And uh, uh, and I enjoyed ministering to Catholics. Now, of course, I did too. Of course, you know, I didn't agree with the doctrine and, and uh, they didn't convert me. <laughs> But I right. sure converted a bunch of them and uh, and then knew a lot of Catholics that were born right. again, knew a lot of Catholics that were filled with the Holy Ghost. And um, and so we, we had a great time. And I got I preached in Catholic churches all over Mexico, some big, big cathedrals, big things like that. I also knew places where you went there, they'd kill you, you know, oh, so right. their religion gets pretty mean. And and so, uh, uh, you know, there's places when I went to Mexico, there's places that that a, a, a light skinned guy had had never ever 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 gone to and returned alive. They'd gone wow. and never come back, you wow. know, because they'd, they'd kill him. But faith, I tell you, there, there's not enough things that I can say about faith, or enough things you can say about faith. It's just one of those things that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right. And and this is my entering my fifty fifth year of ministry. And I wouldn't trade My for goodness, it. I have Terry. lived by faith yes. literally around the world. Right. I mean, in jungles yes, and deserts and mountains and in, 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 through, through rivers infested with crocodiles and snakes and <laughs> piranhas. And I, I mean, God seen, has seen us through. Right. And I, I love faith. I love to hear about faith. I love to preach about faith. I love to think about it. I love right. to operate in it. And sometimes you think, well, it's not fun when you say, oh, my God, i got to get this by faith. Well, no, it can be fun. Just yeah. to just to lock your faith in and, and you go to the anchor of the word and anchor yourself to that word and to that foundation and start believing God and watch him do miracles. Well, and, and that's and that's how uh, you grow in that. You know, you come up against something and the enemy tries to discourage you. Circumstances you see are trying to do everything they can to talk you out of it. And yet you choose. Yes, to look at the, what the Word Absolutely. of God says. Absolutely. Say it out of your mouth. Believe it in your heart. Before we leave the air today, I want to just remind everybody, go back and read Romans 10. We mentioned this on, I think, the program before about how the Word of faith is near us, even in our heart exactly. and in our mouth. But it, it talks about that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Romans ten seventeen. Romans 10. The more you take these words off these pages and you let them walk off the pages and get into your heart, you begin to renew your mind to them. You become familiar with them and you begin to say them out of your mouth. You begin to have the life, really, that God wants you to have, is, which is high-class Christianity, yes, thinking is. the thoughts of God. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm Our, glad you've redone your book. Well, thank it's you. It's going to help you. a lot of people. I believe it will be, you know, and that's what we want to do, darling. That's what we've been doing all our lives. So God bless you all. We're so thankful you joined us today. And again, we're going to remind you that you are more, more than, than conquerors. conquerors. Bye-bye. Thank you.